Hi, welcome. This is another video on BandLabs. If you haven't checked out my other videos, feel free to go check out those. There should be a link above. Um, in this video, um, we're focusing on pitch shift and MIDI transpose. These are both things that you can be using to change the pitch on your audio tracks. So let's jump into the mixer. I'll start with um, pitch shift. Um, this can be applied to the voice or mic input, a guitar input or bass input. So for this little tutorial, I'll use the mic. So here we go, we're in here. I've got my microphone selected. You can see that happening there. Um, now to find these features, we've got to go down to the editor. And in here, we've got the minus pitch shift and the plus pitch shift. We've got the playback rate and we've got the reverse. So I'll go through each one of these, but first we need some audio. So let's just record a bit of audio. Uh, we're looking at recording a bit of audio so that we can test out some of these features to do with pitch shift. Uh, we're looking at recording a bit of audio so that we can test out some of these features to do with pitch shift. Okay, so we've got some audio there. Let's see what we can do. Let's start off with doing the pitch shift plus. So let's move that up a bit. So each time you click on it, it's processed the file. So we've taken that up to five. Uh, we're looking at recording a bit of audio so that we can test out some of these features to do with pitch shift. Okay, if I take that to the maximum, which I think is 12, So it's starting to sound a bit interesting, quite comical, um, so you might have a purpose for that one. Let's take it back the other way. So back to the original, let's just hear that again. Uh, we're looking at recording a bit of audio so that we can test out some of these features to do with pitch shift. Okay, so let's take this down. So that's just two steps. Uh, we're looking at recording a bit of audio so that we can test out some of these features to do with pitch shift. Now that's already drastically changed it. Let's go a bit lower. Uh, we're looking at recording a bit of audio so that we can test out some of these features to do with pitch shift. <laughs> Let's see how far that goes. I think it goes down to 12. Okay. Okay, so that's changing the pitch. Let's take that back to zero. Um, this time, let's do another bit of audio, but let's look at the playback rate. Okay, so this time we're looking at the playback rate and what that does to particular sound. So playback rate, let's just hear what I just recorded again. Okay, so this time we're looking at the playback rate and what that does to particular sound. So let's go plus. Now you're noticing that the file is shrinking. So we're making the playback rate quicker. So let's just hear that. Okay, so this time we're looking at the playback rate and what that does to particular sound. And you're noticing that's changing the pitch as well. Let's go a little bit higher. Okay, so this time we're looking at the playback rate and what that does to particular sound. Okay, uh, let's go a little bit quicker. Okay, so this time we're looking at the playback rate and what that does to particular sound. Okay. What happens if we reverse this playback rate? So back to the original. Okay, so this time we're looking at the playback rate and what that does to particular sound. Okay, let's take it slower. You're noticing this is lengthening the sound or lengthening the time value of what this um, sound file will have. Okay, so this time we're looking at the playback rate and what that does to particular sound. Okay, so not only has that lengthened the duration of how long this file is going to go for, but it's also dropped the pitch. 
So there might be some comical situations where you might want to use something like this. There might be some other applications. Um, and this would apply to any guitar recording audio that you might have playing in there um, and any um, bass playing that you might have in. So any audio that you're playing in, you could apply these sorts of things too. Let's try the reverse this time. Um, I'll go back to my original file and have a listen to that one. Uh, we're looking at recording a bit of audio so that we can test out some of these features to do with pitch shift. Okay, so let's look at this one doing the reverse. So let's put this on reverse and play that back. Okay, so that's definitely made my voice sound really strange, something like a very foreign language. Um, but this is a technique that's often used on um, guitars and other sounds where they want to reverse the attack of what's happened on certain sounds. Um, really, really useful feature. Um, what happens if I was to put that back again? And lower the pitch. And then reverse that. Okay, so you can start combining some of these techniques and creating something really weird. Okay, so anyway, let's move on. Let's add our other track, and I want to look at the transpose. So um, I'm going to be selecting the MIDI instruments. Um, coming into here. So when we're here, I've got my keyboard selected. Okay. Um, now this will apply to any sound that I've got here. It could be piano, it could be guitar sounds, it could be synths, um, it could be synth pads. I could be applying it to that. Um, special effects, guitar, drum pads. What else? Let's go back to the synth pads. What can I find here? Uh, atmospheric pad, what's that one like? Let's try that. So, I might turn the volume down a little bit though. Let's rewind. We'll mute the other track. Let's just record some audio. So we've got that audio, let's have a quick listen again. Okay, so we've got our audio there. Now if we come again over to this MIDI editor, this time it's a little bit different. So here we can see all the notes that are played, okay? Now, what I want to be able to do is use some of this stuff. So unless I select some of these notes, all of this, I cannot click on these notes. So now if I click into this space, and on my Mac, I'm going to go Command-A. Windows, I think it's Control-A. And now I can actually do something to these sounds. So let's go with minus one. And let's play this back again. So we literally just transpose that down um, a semitone. Let's go down one more. Okay, so let's transpose that down again. So let's take that back up. So I'll go plus. And you can actually see, so if you've got a little bit of basic keyboard knowledge, you'll be able to work out that I'm playing an E and a G and a B. I'm playing an E minor chord there. So if I shift this upper semitone again, I'm going to have an F minor chord will be my first chord.
So the implications here, you can play one chord progression and shift this around the keyboard, do transpositions, do modulations without having to change things. Um, the other advantage of this, if I go back to over here, I can actually change the sound. So I could take this part, if I change this back to piano, so I'm back to piano, play this again. And then I was to duplicate this track on this duplicate track, I could take this one back to that pad. But this time when I go back into the MIDI area, I don't want it to play all of the same sound. So if I take out my top three, top three notes, So now I'm just playing the bass line of what I had. Let's put those together. So I've got the piano playing both of what I just did, and I've got the low part. And then if I was to transpose that again, I didn't like that key. So let's select all, and let's shift it down a semitone. Go to the other one. Select all, shift that down a semitone as well. Let's play that back again. Oh, I've got them out. Let's undo that one by taking that back. Let's try to do that fix again. MIDI editor on that one. Transpose down one. Go to the other one, MIDI editor, transpose down one, hopefully I did it right that time. There we go. So hopefully I've been able to point out a few new features to you um, to do with the pitch shift, which might be a bit of a fun um, thing to play with. The transpose feature, I'm sure a lot of people get into that one um, to be able to transpose things, whether you've got a singer that you've created a backing track for and you need to change the pitch so that you can then do the vocal part um, very, very quickly. So um, get into it. One other thing I'll mention is that if you don't know much about MIDI and you need some more help, check out my MIDI video. Um, I'll put a link to that um, just above.